Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Of course, my name is Latwinger, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to, of course, a brand new LEGO Jurassic World video, and today it's going to be one video that has been long, 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 long awaited, and I do apologize about that, but it is a video that showcases all of the vehicles that are available in LEGO Jurassic World. Now, I will give you guys a little bit of a heads up, as at the time of this recording, these are all the vehicles that are available, but there is a little bit of a kind of smidgen a little bit of a extra cautionary thing that I want to mention because there were pre-order exclusive vehicles in fact I have one of them right here the animal control vehicle and I think um I think the animal control the in-gen command maybe I'm not exactly certain I'm pretty sure it was the animal control vehicle was the only one that was uh, pre-order exclusive on the Sony consoles and then Microsoft and the Xbox console also did get a pre-order exclusive which um, was I think it was a uh, oh man what was the name of the vehicle that uh, is over there oh, I forget but there's another vehicle that's exclusive to that so keep in mind that there will be a vehicle missing if you're watching this like six months down the line when they've released those vehicles in dlc there may be a vehicle that's missing or something like that but we're going to be covering the core vehicles that are in the game and i will show of course the animal control vehicle as well so just wanted to mention that right off the bat because i know some people will mention it and ask like hey how do you have that and i don't have it uh, because some vehicle war or vehicles i should say were pre-order exclusive. So nonetheless, let us begin and we will go through them one by one, spawning them in. So here is the Jurassic Park Rescuer. And uh, this thing is pretty nice. Uh, it goes super duper fast, which is awesome. So in that regard, it's uh, quite a nice vehicle for sure. And uh, I like the way that it looks. It's a very, very, very cool design. And one thing that I always love about the uh, Lego games and the vehicles in those games is that oftentimes, if you just sit here, you can literally see the entire build. Like, you could see how to assemble this thing. Now, of course, the inside of the vehicle won't be perfectly put together and such, but you can definitely make out quite a few of the qualities in terms of how to assemble this thing. So then you can just go ahead and recreate it in real life, which is pretty sweet and cool. So I do like that quite a bit. Then we move on to the forklift. Not nearly as exciting, but it is a vehicle that is available in the game. And uh, it does have its features right here of being able to lift the actual fork part. So there you go. There it is. It's going down and up i've never actually tried to pick up anything with it i wonder if we wait if we just drive this thing close wait we're gonna try to pick up chris pratt here or owen grady i should say come on no stand on it okay what if i jumped up here come on ah yeah, yeah. it would have been so amazing if i could wait okay wait maybe if we do this right Oh, <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, oh, we got it. We're, we're going to pick him up. Whoa, okay. Well, that's the opposite of picking somebody up. Uh, but here's the forklift. It's very, 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 very slow. So you'll notice it's quite cumbersome. I do like the way that it moves in the back. Like, it's kind of accurate to a forklift, which is cool. Obviously, it has the little play feature right here, which is really, really nice to see. And uh, actually, let's try this. Can we pick up a vehicle? If we get in underneath. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Okay. Oh, we did it! We whoa. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We're gonna flip this thing. Come on! <laughs> We're so close. We are so close. But if I if it was up to me, we would just spend probably like 30 minutes trying to do that. So let's move on while we still can. Here's the road sweeper. So if you want to clean up the streets, this is definitely not the appropriate area to use the road sweeper. Obviously, you'd want to kind of drive this thing onto a road you don't want to be sweeping the ground that's not really the way that it's supposed to work but obviously it has a really nice little feature right there of being able to actually like have the sweeping motions up in the front it's obviously a pretty small vehicle also does maneuver pretty slowly uh, which usually the vehicles that kind of like do any type of jobs or have any sort of like unique features like this they do move quite slowly and cumbersome so keep that in mind all right so Next up, we have the Jurassic Tour vehicle, sorry, which is a very, very iconic vehicle, of course. This is the vehicle in which I think this would be, well, if you don't count the helicopter, which they take to Jurassic Park, this is the first vehicle that they kind of go inside of. Uh, this is the first automobile, I, I believe, that we see in the Jurassic Park film uh, or films in general, the very, very first one. So it's really cool. It's obviously very, very, very cool in terms of the colors 
uh, and being unique and kind of being almost like an attraction. Uh, obviously, it was an on-rails vehicle, so it's not technically supposed to drive like this, like off-rails, but it does, which is nice, uh, and has a, a lot of the features that we saw in the film, which is cool. It even has, like, windshield wipers right in the front there. You see those? So, again, really cool attention to details, as well as you'll notice, I'm not sure if it's, well, I think you can see it from here quite well. Right next to the steering wheel, there's the cup that was shaking. Remember the very first time that the T-Rex comes by? They're standing there, and then the water just starts shaking in the cup, and they're like, what is that? What is happening? And so it's cool that even that tiny little detail made it in to the game all right so here's the soft top uh, of the uh, rescuer i think it was called so pretty cool again uh, very very similar obviously to the jeep version that we looked at uh, i mean it's practically identical except for the rooftop ver uh, part of it uh, other than that there really isn't anything different about it it's essentially the exact same vehicle it drives the same moves about the same speed and such uh, which is cool there's nothing bad about that no complaints on my end all right so let's move on to the other version of the exact same vehicle so again we have the responder right here Sorry, it's called the Responder, not the Rescuer. I don't know why I keep calling it the Rescuer. Uh, here's the Responder soft dump version, and then there's also the Roll Cage version. So three different versions of the same vehicle. So essentially, it's the exact same base of the vehicle, but then the uh, top of the vehicle, or I guess the top level of the vehicle, is just redone to be a little bit different and stand out and just gives you a little bit of a different uh, experience in terms of visually and aesthetically what it looks like uh, in terms of driving and uh, the things that it does it's all the same stuff so it doesn't have any like unique uh, abilities suddenly or anything like that so uh, in that regard it's the exact same vehicle all right we then move on to the isla sorna gatherer which is probably one of my personal favorites because i think it's um it's kind of like the responder, but it's a lot more like it blends in with nature. Plus, it's, it has more of a pickup truck kind of look, which is sweet. It does look cool and neato. I do like it quite a bit. It's a very, very cool design. I could totally see this being like a transformer. Like to me, when I saw this design, I was like, whoa, that thing could be totally a transformer. It looks cool. It's a two seater, I believe. So that's also a nice thing about it. It's uh, quite cool. It doesn't drive as fast as the responder. It's a little bit slower than, uh, but still very, very, very cool uh, little vehicle. And uh, I enjoy it. I think it's a neat little uh, thing to drive around. And, of course, aesthetically, it's one of the coolest vehicles in the entire game. I mean, it just looks cool. Look at that rumble away. All right. So, well, I'm moving on to the next vehicle, which is actually uh, another Isla Sorna-inspired vehicle. And this is the Observer. So, once again, similarly to the Responder, this is just a varied version of the same vehicle that we just drove right now. It just looks different in the back. Instead of having kind of the hatchback open design, it has more of an encapsulated look so that if you want, you could kind of like sit inside and then observe and look around as you're driving through uh, the scenery, which is pretty cool because it kind of gives it a, uh, that kind of vibe of if you've ever been to the zoo, there's these little things where you could like stick your head out of almost like the same kind of bubble. And then you could look at some certain uh, at like certain animals. Usually it's like tiny little um Goodness gracious, what were the ones that we were looking at? It wasn't chipmunks, but it was something similar uh, in the same kind of family of, like, rodents, but I don't remember specifically uh, what it was. But if your zoos have that, you know what I'm talking about. All right, moving on to the next thing, uh, the Van Owen. And uh, if your zoos don't have that, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck is he talking about? Uh, this thing is obviously just a van. It looks pretty cool. I kind of wish that they will take this character model and use it for Lego Marvel uh, Superhero, or sorry, Lego Marvel's Avengers, and use it, if Punisher's in the game, use it for a Punisher van, because I think it would be totally perfect for that. Like, you put a skull on the side and everything, and it would look perfect. So I think it does look really, 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 really sweet. Uh, very, very, very cool design, and um, just an upgrade over the much smaller van design that we've seen before uh, in plenty of other Lego games. Again, I think it's just cool how many varied vehicles they made for this game. I think it might be the most varied in terms of vehicles because when I think of the like the DC games uh, the DC comics games uh, when I think of the Marvel game and I think of Indiana Jones so on and so forth uh, they have vehicles but I don't think they're nearly as varied or different and don't get me wrong we I just was pointing out the fact that there's three vehicles that are essentially the same vehicle just looking different a little bit on the top part but as we move on from category to category, you notice that there's very different vehicles. Like there's forklifts, there's a road sweeper, there's Jeeps, there's like much more classic vehicles, there's 
pickup trucks, there's vans, and now we move on to the Hunter Scout, which uh, looks pretty intriguing already. Uh, I do need to get through these a little bit faster because I've tried to record this video before and it was 32 minutes long because of how much I blabber on. So uh, the Hunter Scout, very cool. Kind of reminds me of a bumper car. And yes, those are whips in the front that they uh, utilize very creatively to give it a unique look and perspective. I think it looks awesome. It has a nice little uh, nightlight feature up at the top there. So you can kind of like scout ahead of you. And of course, it's called a scout. So that's the predominant feature that you would use it for. Being a small, uh, smaller vehicle, it also goes very, very fast, as you might have noticed when we were driving it. Here's the Hunter Snare ATV, uh, and this thing goes super uber fast, especially in comparison to all the other vehicles that we've driven so far. I love that I almost look like I'm uh, cutting the grass. Behind the wheels, you see that? <laughs> it looks like we're cutting the grass down here. That's pretty cool. And it goes super fast, so if, uh, if I ever do like a race video where I'm racing somebody in the game, uh, this will probably be the vehicle that I choose because it does go super duper fast. That's a perfect parking spot for it right there. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next vehicle we go. And the next one, oh, this one is really cool looking. This is the Hunter Snagger, the most uh, Transformers looking thing is, uh, for sure. It kind of almost looks like something that is about to transform from vehicle mode into robot mode and uh, vice versa, I guess. It's very, 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 very unique looking. Uh, obviously, it almost looks like you should be able to like interact with it in more ways than just drive it. Like It almost looks like it would have been nice if you could like sit right there. Sorry. Let me try to get it right there. Not in the driving seat, but okay. I don't think it's clear as to what I'm pointing out. Uh, but sit like right up here because this looks like a seating, uh, sitting spot. And then, of course, up at the top there, there's like a cage. And then there's a collecting thing up at the front. So a very, very unique looking vehicle. And again, that's what I was saying that I love about the vehicles in this game is the fact that they're very, very different. And a lot of them have a lot of really, really unique aesthetics to them. So here's the Hunter Harasser. Once again, very different looking vehicle. Uh, kind of a cross between the Scout and the uh, Jeep that we looked at before, the Responder, in terms of the way that it's built. So, very cool looking, uh, a lot more of a traditional kind of vehicle, not nearly as crazy looking as the last one that we looked at, but pretty nice and uh, has about an average to medium level speed, which is the same exact thing. Uh, then we move on to the first bike in the game, and that's the Hunter Snare. There is other bikes, so stay tuned for that. Uh, obviously, the bikes go very, very, very fast, about uh, on par with the ATV, so this thing does go quite quickly and uh, is um, quite effective uh, in terms of its uh, ability to traverse the land because it's uh, a lot thinner, so you're able to get into a lot more nooks and crannies around the map. We then move on to our more traditional vehicles. This is the Site B Transport, which looks uh, like much more of a traditional vehicle. Like if you take down those little metal parts in the back, it could be considered a lot more of a pickup truck, like a traditional pickup truck uh, in that sense. But as you can see, it does actually have seating in the back there. So you could kind of like uh, use this almost like as a tour guide type vehicle where you're just, uh, you would approach up here and you'd be like, well, this is the Gyrosphere Valley and we are about to go drive by some uh, Stegosaurus horses and so on and so forth uh, then we move on to the speed car which is from jurassic park oh sorry jurassic war uh, no it's not uh is it jurassic park 3 or is it i think it's jurassic park 3 it's whenever they go back to new york or not new york san diego right I think they go to San Diego. This thing is pretty fast, of course, for a traditional automobile scale vehicle. It's super fast. Uh, obviously, the fanciest of the vehicles, for sure, in the game. Because, I mean, it kind of looks like, you know, some sort of Porsche or... Again, I'm not a big, big car person. I don't know all the names and such, but... It's a very cool, classic kind of vehicle. All right, speaking of classic, here's a classic police car patrol vehicle, which does look sweet. I like that it's a, it's got a very kind of, um, like, I don't know, not 80s or 90s vibe, but like an old school police car. You know, it's not something that you would see in a modern movie, but it would be something that you would see in an older Jurassic Park type film uh, of that time. So I, I think that's really, really cool, and it does look neat, and uh, I like it quite a bit. I think it, they did an excellent, excellent job uh, with that one right there. All right, moving on to the next vehicle. We have the Site B Transport. This is the exact same vehicle. Uh, we're probably not even going to drive it right here. This is just a rusty version of it. So uh, if we took the vehicle that we drove just moments ago, which was the uh, black kind of pickup truck looking vehicle, and then you just left it out in the rain for years and years and years. 
that's what would happen to it. It would rust up and it would look like that. So here's our first vehicle from Jurassic World. It's just a traditional pickup truck. It's very, 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 very large. As you can see, it's quite uh, a bit longer than the police truck, which is cool. So uh, again, really need to see uh, just a traditional kind of like vehicle that you could see on the road. Obviously, it wouldn't say Jurassic World on the side of it, but it's a pickup, tru a pickup truck. Uh, and it's cool to see a lot more traditional vehicles in here as well. Uh, we then move on to something that isn't very traditional, the Hunter Command. Uh, obviously, a very military-inspired kind of design, as are many of the Hunter-like vehicles. The one thing that I always found a little bit weird is that I don't know why this one has only a side mirror on the right-hand side. It doesn't have one on the left. It's like, is that not necessary? Is that because there's a hammer over there? It's like, hammer time! I just use hammers for my side mirrors. I don't need... I have a rear mirror, and that's it. I don't need the other one. So, I, I don't know why necessarily they chose to do that but again it gives it more of a unique look the front is also a lot more curved uh, or kind of slanted i should say and that also again gives it a pretty cool and unique feel all right i feel like i said pretty cool like fifty thousand times this is the site b saloon so this is a lot more of a comfortable leisurely ride it looks like it's almost starting to rust up though because you see it does have some like rusted features all over it so maybe this is like a crossover between the uh black that was like pristine and new then there's this kind of in between and then there's the rusty version so again they do double dip and in this case triple dip into certain designs and use them several times but they still make them feel different and unique which is cool all right then we move on to the hunter transport which is awesome looking this thing is just absolutely incredible obviously a very very cool military kind of style truck uh, because of the colors predominantly. Obviously, if you change the colors, it wouldn't look nearly as militarized, but I think it just looks really cool, and I would love to see this vehicle appear again uh, on the screen, on the big screen, because I think it's just so, so, so cool looking and uh, such a unique looking vehicle. Again, something that I could totally see uh, the Transformers movies like being like, hey, we like that. Let's, let's do something like that. Make it look like that, you know? <laughs> Just design it to be uh, inspired by that design. All right, here we go. The Hunter Trapper is next. So once again, uh, same kind of military kind of colors and uh, appearance to them. Still looks really cool. I kind of wish, again, that you could be able to um, actually like... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, wait. Maybe. I, I, I wasn't sure that you could do that. If I could just... If I could just... Oh, man. I, I was wondering if there's a way for me to like jump up there, leave a character, and then quickly transform that would have been really cool because then you could like actually drive another character around but i wish that in the future when they make more if there's another lego jurassic game uh, or any lego game for that matter if there are spots for multiple characters i wish that i could like you know throw a character in here then transform into the other character and then drive both characters around it just kind of gives you a little bit more fun things to do and i guess technically if you have this on co-op you might be able to pull that off because you just have like your friend jump in while you're driving so that could work uh then we move on to the jurassic constructor which is obviously the vehicle that uh, more of the maintenance operators would use around the uh, actual site you know they drive around as you can see they have all their equipment back there and then they have a nice lengthy ladder up at the top that they would utilize to reach points of maybe there's a breach or maybe there's some sort of thing wrong with a transformer or something like that. Hey, get a transformer because I've been referencing transformers the whole time. Uh, but if there is anything wrong around the site, they would pull up using that vehicle and then utilize it uh, and all the tools that provide them uh, in order to take care of the problems. So this thing is awesome. This thing is the buggy right here. And I love this thing because it's so, so cool looking. Uh, obviously, as a buggy, it's not necessarily to scale because as you can see it's about the height of a of our giant truck here so it's obviously not to scale to vehicles but i think it just looks cool it's got that cool kind of um, springy effect and elements going on in the back there which is really neat and it's one of the more unique looking vehicles plus it's very 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 quick for a vehicle that's on four wheels for this game because traditionally most of them move about as quick as this world's transporter so there's just a regular transporter right here uh, more inspired by jurassic world uh, the other ones were more Jurassic Park themed. 
So a little bit more modern looking, as you can see, in terms of colors and the windows being tinted and looking a little bit more fancy and the rims are different. So in that regard, it's a little bit more modern uh, and such, but no particular differences in terms of driving speed or anything like that between the other uh, site type visiting vehicles that we've looked to before. Uh, this is the Jurassic World Observer, the largest of the observing kind of type vehicles. As you can see, it's got how many people can that thing sit? Two, four, six... And I guess if you have somebody next to the driver, seven uh, people in total can reside within this vehicle, which is awesome because most of the other vehicles in the game are either two sitters, a single driver, or maximum of four. So this thing is cool. Obviously, uh, this is the kind of thing that you would utilize to give a tour, almost like a safari type vehicle. You know, if you've ever been to a safari, this is the kind of thing you would sit inside of as you would drive by. Uh, and uh, look at animals and go like, ooh, there's an animal, and whatever people do at safaris. Uh, all right, next up we have the Gyrosphere, which is very appropriate because we are in the Gyrosphere Valley, so technically they would uh, be de actually dispensed from up here, right? And uh, then as they come down, they drive their way up over to here. Then, of course, the people sit inside, and then you're off to your adventure. Now, of course, in the film, if you recall, the gyrospheres actually did have uh, room for two people. Instead of one, it wasn't like a solitary type thing. But I wonder how big it would have had to be to be for two people. Like, you'd probably have to have a double as big, which honestly would have been kind of cool to have this ginormous gyrosphere driving around the field. So maybe... In the future game, they'll make it for two people, which would be really, really cool. All right, we are uh, approaching the end here. Here's another version of the Responder. Once again, same exact vehicle, just visually different. Um, other than that, there is no differences to it. As you can see, it says JP29 on it. This uh, the Jurassic Park logo on the side. I believe this is supposed to be the uh, vehicle that they... Uh, fix in the Jurassic World movie, so obviously that's why it's kind of rusted up and it's not nearly as new uh, or shiny as the other ones that we looked at, but it's cool that, again, they paid attention to it and they placed it in uh, the actual game. So this is the Jurassic Pursuer, which I believe is the vehicle that um, uh, Owen Grady does use, or Chris, is, uh, Chris Pratt's character uh, uses in the film quite a bit, uh, especially towards the end of the movie. He utilizes the... Uh, uh, motorcycle for uh, for a little while there's quite a few scenes there uh, where he utilizes this bike uh, again it's the second bike that we've looked at so far i think there's is there one more oh no i think the other thing is like a little atv uh same exact design just a different hue of green uh other than that no differences to it uh let me double check uh yeah yeah that's not a bike i forgot uh there's an atv which is awesome again it just shows you how much varied vehicles like look we've had buggies atvs pickup trucks regular trucks weird trucks um uh, jeeps uh more of a regular kind of car uh, a fancy car now we are driving an atv which again obviously not to scale because it's massive it's bigger than the motorcycle which it, it, it really shouldn't be this big but at the same time it's fun to drive it around and uh, obviously has kind of the key features that you would see from an atv the only thing i wish maybe they would have made the tires a little bit bigger because for some reason it kind of looks comical like <laughs> it almost doesn't look to scale because uh, it just looks like it should be maybe a little bit larger uh, for the tire area. All right, uh, moving on, we have uh, just a few more vehicles left. Here's the InGen Transport, uh, more of a traditional kind of looking uh, vehicle, except it's ginormous. Uh, ooh, this one actually could sit quite a few people as well, I guess. And uh, this is the vehicle that they would use, like, for example, uh, spoiler alert, in Jurassic World, when the Indominus escapes, which I guess isn't necessarily a spoiler because it's in the trailers, but, uh, nonetheless, just wanted to give the spoiler alert just to be safe. Uh, when the Indominus escapes, they send the InGen uh, group to go try to stop it and uh, so on and so forth. So this is the kind of vehicle that they would use to deploy. You know, they would all huddle in there, uh, get inside, and then they get deployed into the field and try to track down the uh, problem in the park. Or in this case, I guess, in the world. All right, we move on to the mobile veterinary unit, which is a pretty important little vehicle, especially in the end uh, of the film. It has uh, quite a few appearances. That's why there is little claw marks at the back of the vehicle. So again, very appropriate and accurate 
to the film. This is a veterinary unit, so this is what the veterinar veterinarians, sorry, vet veterinars, I don't know what that was, um, uh, would actually deploy in to go, like, heal a dino, or if there's a problem, like, you know, they need to, like, disper maybe disperse some sort of formula or food, uh, they would go into the field utilizing that large vehicle there, because I'm assuming there's lots and lots of supplies inside. Then we move on to the InGen Command, which is uh, kind of a Hummer-like uh, looking vehicle. Uh, very cool. Again, uh, does look much more militarized in terms of its look and appearance. Uh, I just drove into that thing uh, very badly, so I apologize about that. A cool looking vehicle. I like it quite a bit uh, and a very, very, very neat addition to the game. Again, it just adds to the variance of the vehicles in the game. Uh, we then move on to the second to last vehicle, which is the ACU Transport. Super duper cool looking vehicle because it has actually six tires instead of the traditional four uh, that we've seen so far. So in that regard, it's cool. And because it also has kind of like front two wheels and then the back has four uh, sets of wheels, which is cool and, and neat to see. Let's try out something. Can we jump in here? Uh, potentially, maybe double jump. Uh, maybe I could use another vehicle as like a jump base. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to jump in there. Maybe somebody with a high jump. Um, let's see. Claire, can you get in there? Yes, she can. All right. So there you go. And I should have probably had Claire drive the mobile veterinary unit. That would have been more appropriate for the film. But yeah, whatever. Uh, we then move on to the last and final vehicle, which I believe is the DLC exclusive one. And that's the, uh, is that ACU transport? Or is it? I forgot what it's called. You see, I already forgot what it's called. Animal control vehicle. There we go. So this, again, similar to the veterinary one, uh, but more from Jurassic Park, I'm guessing, because it's an older style design uh, of vehicle. So this is kind of the mobile veterinary unit for... Um, the older films. That's basically what it is. So there you guys have it. That is essentially it. Lots and lots of vehicles to look at um, and lots of things to see, of course. In total, we had how many? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six vehicles. That's a lot. That is quite extensive roster of vehicles so pretty cool to see that many vehicles appear in the game very 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 neat indeed especially because a lot of them are quite varied especially aesthetically not so much in terms of what they do because of course essentially at the end of the day they're just a form of transportation uh, but they do look different they do drive uh, differently and such which is cool in terms of speed and such and where you can get with certain vehicles like you know you won't be able to take a giant pickup truck into this area but you will be able to take a motorcycle and then drive it in and uh, hang around the park which is cool so uh, it, it's neat that they do have varied scale and such and they play around with the way that they look and uh, in general I'm very happy with all the vehicles that made it into the game that being said let me know what was your favorite vehicle in the comments section below as always guys and gals as always have an absolutely fan flipping fantastic day I will catch you lovely folks next time peace out see you later alligators. Bye-bye, everyone.